All right, guys, so today we got another awesome video from you. This question's been asked a ton of times is how do I use a power probe? I'm scared I'm gonna burn something up. I'm a little worried that I'm gonna apply circuit power to the ground side or ground to the power side. Is it safe? I don't wanna burn up a PCM or whatever. Um, so what better way to explain this than the people that actually make the tool so they're here today. They're going to walk you through some tips and tricks and how to use your power probe correctly. And even the guys that know a lot about a power probe may learn something today. So you guys stick around. It seems no matter where I go, I hear somebody's scared of using a power probe. I've even been to some shops where they say power probes aren't allowed. Um, and there, you can certainly do damage with a power probe if you're applying power or ground in the wrong place. But as a master technician myself who's been using these tools for over 20 years in the real world, I've never damaged anything and I'll tell you how. Number one, when using any of these tools, just the testing advantage of this tool before you even start applying power and ground is huge. The fact that I'm connected directly on the vehicle's source battery, it's gonna keep my readings accurate wherever I'm taking measurements throughout the car. And it's looking for voltage drops from the source battery wherever I am in the car. That's huge in itself. And I haven't even started applying power and ground yet. But let's show you how that works in a real world situation. Here we got a lamp circuit. Obviously, these two bulbs are not as bright as they should be. So we've got some problems in the circuit. Now, checking with a power probe, I might check for power. Oops. Turn the speaker on. Check for power. But let's check it up at the lamp. Uh-oh. See, right away, no light, no tone alerts me that there's more than half a, volt, a voltage drop in the circuit. And sure enough, I'm down to eight and a half volts here compared to down here, 12 volts. So let's start backing through the circuit. We're still at eight and a half here. So I know if I'm good here, I've got voltage drop here. We have a wiring issue in between. We've got a loose connector. We've got a corroded wire, something like that going on. We'll repair that. And the lights got a little brighter. Okay, we're good. We're back to 12 volts now. But they're still not as bright as they should be. Let's find out what's going on on the ground side. Uh-oh, same thing. If the ground was good, I should get a green light and no more than half a volt on the ground side. Up here, we're showing 4.4 volts. That's not good. Now, here's a situation where I might use a rocker switch to apply ground and see how the circuit responds. Sure enough, my lights got brighter. That verifies there's nothing wrong on this side of the circuit. It's all on the ground side of the circuit. So just like we did on the positive side, okay, if I'm good here, but not good here, we've got a wiring issue, a connector issue, something going on in between. We'll repair that. Now I've got my full brightness. Now I've got my good grounds. Now, you saw the way I applied ground there. That's fine when you know the circuit you're working in. I've heard those nightmare stories myself. I'm going to give you one example I heard just recently. Late model Mercedes came in for an AC complaint. Hotshot guy technician thought he'd go out there and see if the com didn't see the compressor engaging, so he thought he would manually engage it by applying power to it with his power probe. Makes sense. This is a new late model Mercedes though. He did not bother looking in the book, in the service manual to see how this system works. It is not an on off clutch engagement. It is a PWM controlled variable displacement compressor. So number one fault, <laughs> he wasn't gonna be able to on off that thing anyway by applying power. Number two, he did not disconnect it from the circuit before he applied power to it. And so that power he did apply went back to the PWM module controlling it and fried it. 
He replaced the compressor thinking it was bad because, of course, the, it didn't engage and still didn't work and had fried a module. That's a really bad example, but that just, shows, just goes to show you how you should know what you're working on before you go applying power and ground. Uh, know the system. Look up the schematic. Do not apply a power and ground where you don't know where it's going. That You could risk some damage. But like, like I told you, I've been using these tools for over 20 years, working on the latest state-of-the-art stuff, and I've never fried a module yet. So just be careful before you pull that switch, before you pull that trigger, because you could do some damage. Know what you're working on. All right, guys, so hopefully this answers some of the ways that you can use a power probe to help you diagnose a problem in the wiring, whether it be on the ground side, which most of the time it is, as we all know, or the power side. Um, it's important to know what you're working on. Uh, just be careful when you're using them. They're a very valuable tool that can, can gain you a lot of um, help in your diagnostic process, especially when you can test in, you know, testing modules such as power window regulators and stuff like that. They're, they're pretty much foolproof on that. Anyway guys, hopefully that helped y'all out and answered a couple of questions that you guys have been asking in some of the videos. How does it work and how is it going to help you in your job? So like always, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, hit that thumbs up. You can always check on any of the Power Pro stuff that you see on their website. They've got a lot of videos and useful information that can walk you through helping you decide different tests that you want to use on a vehicle. And they've got some amazing videos and literature to talk you through all the functions and features that they have. Thanks for watching. Thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, click that button. You guys have a great week, and we will catch y'all next time. See ya.